Okay, welcome to part two of the video series on multiple object tracking in videos using OpenCV in Python. Uh, in part one, we saw um, the importance of object tracking and particularly we, we saw how can we track a single object in a video using OpenCV in Python. In this particular video, we will be extending that uh, to multiple objects. So given a video, how can we initialize multiple objects and then uh, how can we basically track all these objects reliably in the video. So the basic idea behind multiple object tracking is like um, each, each object is tracked by a single tracker, but we have multiple trackers now. So one object is tracked by one tracker, another object in the same video is tracked by another. So each tracker is working independently um, to track its object. So we can have multiple objects, which means there are multiple trackers uh, where each tracker is on its own object. Um, so, so basically, uh, this multiple object tracking is then it, it basically reduces to single object tracking. Uh, but we have multiple single object trackers uh, to, to track multiple objects in a video. So let's see its coding. Uh, its coding is much similar to how we track single object with a little bit modification. So we'll be referring to the coding that we did in the last video, uh, in, in the previous in part, uh, part one of this video series. So let's start uh, coding this. So we have this uh, tracking single object. That's the code that we wrote uh, in the last video for single object. And here is the code that we are going to write for uh, multiple videos. So let's copy and paste some, some of the things uh, that we need exactly off the shelf from there. So first of all, we need that. So that's perfect. Then we need, um, if we want to use different trackers for different objects, um, just in case, these are the trackers available in OpenCV. So let's just copy and paste. Everything is fine right now. Um, in, in, the, in the previous video, we initialized a tracker because uh, we had only one object to track. Here, we have multiple objects to track. So what we will do, we will, initialize, we will actually create a multi-tracker. So that is that line is a little bit different than the previous uh, code. So now we do not have only one tracker, but we have several trackers. So trackers cv2 dot multi tracker um, underscore create. So that's a so multi tracker underscore create. That is basically a function that creates. Um, multiple tracker objects. So you, you now have rather than single tracker, you have multiple object, multiple tracker container with you. So that works as it is. Um, next, uh, we have to read our video stream that is uh, like the same as earlier. So let's read our video stream, this video stream, let's see. Um, yeah. So that's the same thing. So we read our video stream, it's perfect, available. Then what we do is um, we basically um, um, we basically have our uh, frame. Um, let's let's read our frame. Um, but rather than reading, uh, just just read the frame once, because now in the frame we have to select multiple region of interest rather than just one. So let's uh, let's read our frame there. So the first frame is red. Again, no change so far. Um, the change here will be the following. So what we will do is um, we let's say we let's say we have uh, let's say we have three objects to track. Let's say k is equal to three. So what we'll do is we will initialize three boxes. So for i in range three uh, k in this case k. What we will do is cv2 dot m show um, frame. That's a window name frame. The first frame that we just saw here. Uh, bounding box bb is equal to uh, cv2 dot select region of interest um, window frame. That's our window. 
and uh, then we have this frame that's it so it will select the uh, region of interest but that is uh, first box maybe or ith box um, so let me write this uh, ith bounding box bbi ith bounding box on the same frame so what we really want is uh, we have to create a tracker here let's say uh, tracker for object i tracker i tracker for object i that is basically um, tracker dictionary uh, dict and whatever tracker we really want let's let's use csrt or maybe anyone maybe any tracker let's use this one and this for calling that create a function method so let's use that so that will create a tracker now I want to add this tracker uh, with it with its initialized bounding box to my trackers container because I have several trackers here so trackers trackers dot add this function will allow me to add ith tracker uh, along with the frame and its bounding box BBI that's the bounding box for and now these will be uh, added exactly uh, like earlier but now we'll be having uh, three bounding boxes rather than just one so let's run uh, this code and see what happens so yeah so that's the frame it will allow us to basically draw three bounding boxes so let's have the first bounding box this one let let's track this object um, let's track this object oh I just um, I just forgot to press enter I just forgot to press enter I guess I'm doing something um, this and this and then uh, maybe this one so I have now three objects um, I'm done here three objects I've initialized the three objects now I really want to track these three objects um, uh, maybe I can have more objects remember when you select region of interest when you draw a bounding box plus enter then that is selected not otherwise so now the, the rest of the code is much like the same as earlier with with a little change so let me let me just uh, let me just copy and paste the code from from the previous file and see where we really want to change the change the code so that's the code from the last file we changed here so this is true this is true this is true here rather than having um, a tracker update we will be having trackers update because all the trackers they will be uh, they will be updating on next frame so the change is rather than a single tracker update all trackers they will update and rather than they will return a box they will basically uh, return several boxes each um, each um, each tracker will each tracker will return its box so you will rather be having one box you'll be having a lot of a lot of boxes so further uh, rather than having this um, rather than having this one box we may have several boxes so let's loop our boxes for box in boxes so we have several boxes so for each box we we draw this strict this rectangle so now we have a loop rather than uh, we have a loop rather than uh, this uh, so so we have a lot of boxes for each box get the box and draw the rectangle on this particular frame um, we can we can have different colors for example we can have um, this more greenish and more bluish this color for example for each of the each of the rectangle then rest of the story is the same we have to show the frame on which all these rectangles should be drawn uh, then if the video is lengthy um, maybe we have to we, we may get a key from a user uh, if the key is Q we should just break the loop and get out uh, if however the stream ends and the return becomes false then we get out and we have to release the video we have to destroy all the windows so let's run this code uh, hopefully this code should track uh, the objects that we just uh, that we just saw here so let's run this code just just to make this more viewable if it has no issues it should run properly uh, so let's see yeah 
can you see uh, the three objects they are being tracked uh, in this particular video um, yeah so yeah it's awesome it's great it's great um, Wow um, by the way we can we can we can we can select more for example four or five or maybe several of those let's select five of those uh, including the football as well so let's include the football as well so yeah uh, five of those uh, let's see so now let's uh, let's let's crack five objects so let's say referee one press enter uh, football press enter um, maybe this guy press enter um, maybe this guy press enter and maybe maybe this particular guy let's see let's see what happens so after this um, all my boxes are being initialized now let's run this particular code to see whether these uh, boxes they really let's change the color to some other color but this yellow color is not really prominent let's use um, if if this is a bgr convention then let's use the red color if if this is a bgr convention then the following color will be red otherwise the following color will be blue so let's see yeah so now you can see the uh, uh, it loses it loses basically the the football but it is cracking the rest of the objects yeah so it loses the football because the football just got occluded um, the football just got occluded um, very quickly so it loses the track of the football but for the rest of the five objects it is it is tracking them really fine really really fine um, yeah so um, and and we can have we can have test over test over several different by the way uh, it is not required to um, it is not required to add always the same kind of tracker you can have different trackers for different objects for example for box number one or object number one you initialize csrt tracker for another object you may decide to use kcf tracker for another object you may decide to um, use for example moose tracker or medium flow for example if you have several boxes several objects to track uh, you can use different trackers uh, for different objects because at the end of the day this multiple tracker use uses single tracker for each object and there is no restriction to use the same kind of tracker for every object um, for this particular object tracking so yeah so that's the multiple object tracking code which is really really simple uh, just if you know how to track single object uh, then it's a it's a little tweak in that and now you can you can um, you can access multiple multiple objects okay so uh, I wrap up this video here um, uh, in this particular part we see how we use the single tracker to extend it to multi tracker uh, to track multiple objects in the next part of this video series in part 3 we will see how to save these annotations uh, if we if we, for example, have boxes for different frames, how can we use these? How can we save these uh, annotations in files so that if we want to use later on these uh, tracking results, uh, we can we can refer to these results. So how uh, how can we how can we basically save these results, these tracking results, to a file and later on access them and uh, display them on videos? So yeah, hope to see you in the next part of this video series.